Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome back to version 2 of C++ Crash Course. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about polymorphism and virtual functions. Now to get started, let's open up our example, and we'll be first taking a look at uh, virtual functions and how we can define them um, in C++. So here we've got a class Mammal, um, and two derived classes from Mammal, Dog and Cat. So inside of our base class, uh, mammal, we end up implementing this method speak that just prints out, I am a mammal. But notice here a new keyword, this virtual keyword. And this just says, uh, this method can be re-implemented by our derived classes. And that's exactly what we do. So we re-implement speak for both of our derived classes. So now the one for dog says, I'm a mammal, but also a dog. And the one for cat says, I'm a mammal, but also a cat. So we also have another keyword here that I've added, this override. And this is actually an optional keyword here. You don't need this for overriding a virtual method. So if I go ahead and get rid of this and save it, notice um, I, my linter doesn't tell anything to me that I did something wrong. But this override keyword provides a number of useful features. The first one is it gives an immediate hint to the programmer that this isn't a new method we're creating here. This is um, overriding a virtual method someplace. Uh, the other thing it prevents us from doing is accidentally writing a new method. So if I maybe make a mistake, instead of writing speak, I write speaks here. Um, I end up getting an, an error here that says void um, dog speaks marked override, but does not override. So it's preventing me uh, from thinking that I'm overriding a method when I'm actually not. So let's go ahead and get rid of that so it can prevent some of these silly mistakes here. So that's how I can define a virtual method and then override this virtual method in my derived classes. Now let's uh, take a look at some polymorphism and how these two things really go hand in hand with each other. So what I'd really like to do is have a unified interface for a number of different objects, specifically for maybe my base class and my derived classes. So all three of these implement this method speak. Maybe I, inside of a function someplace, I want to just call this method speak and that's gonna be the same for each of these different um, object types. So I don't wanna implement this function three different times, one for each type. I'd rather just implement it a single time. And that's what I can do with polymorphism here. So here I've created um, a function called call func. It takes something of type mammal by reference, and then it just calls this method im.speak. But there's something very uh, unique here that when we create um, an object of each of these types, so one of type mammal, one of dog, and one of cat, we can pass each one of these to this function here. Right? It doesn't matter that this is of type dog, doesn't matter that this is of type cat, it gets upcasted to the base class, and this is perfectly fine. Um, it basically just limits us to we can only access things related to the base class from dog and cat when we do this upcasting here. But remember, dog and cat implemented their own versions of speak here. So the big question that we have outstanding still is which uh, print are we going to see, right? So when we pass in uh, the, the object of type mammal, we're going to see the uh, print of I'm a mammal. However, when we pass in something of type dog or type cat, will we see, you know, I'm a mammal but also a dog and I'm a mammal but also a cat respectively? Or are we going to see the print for type mammal? Well, let's go ahead and see first by just compiling this and running it. So we'll compile our polymorphism example and run this. And you see that we still get the correct prints here, even though that the function itself takes only the base class. So it prints out I'm a mammal for the mammal object. And then for the dog, it prints out, you know, I'm a mammal, but also a dog. And likewise, I'm a mammal, but also a cat for the cat object. So the interesting question here is that how was it able to still figure out which um, function it was supposed to be calling? And this goes back to this thing called dynamic dispatch that I mentioned here in the comments. So when we need to call this function right here, there's actually a layer of indirection. And we can see this indirection inside of um, our executable, right? So if we go ahead and use object dump to disassemble our executable and take a look at the assembly here. And if we go ahead and look around and try to find our main function, and here's our main function. You see we have three calls to this call func here that takes something of type mammal by reference. And if we go ahead and search up to find that, uh, that function, you see here, we don't see a call to a particular function. We see a call to something that's in a register. We're basically dereferencing a pointer in here. So that begs a question of what are we dereferencing a pointer to? Now, the way that you know dynamic dispatch is typically implemented is through this thing called a virtual function table. So every single object gets a pointer to its own, to a virtual function table. And then when you end up calling a method like speak, instead of just directly calling a method, we don't know if this is a base class or a derived class upcasted to a base class. 
So we have to look up inside of our virtual function table which method that we should actually be calling. Should we be calling the one for type mammal, the one for type dog, or the one for type cat? And if we go ahead and go down here, you can see that uh, these methods are still implemented in, um, you know, as functions inside of our uh, instead of our executable. So here's our speak method for mammal, our speak method for dog, and our speak method for cat here. But again, we don't know what we're calling at runtime. So this is a case of runtime polymorphism. We've got objects that, you know, basically are kind of changing shape, um, you know, dynamically at runtime as we pass them and cast them um, to get this unified interface. So we're paying a little price for this indirection in order to have a nice clean unified interface. So um, let's go ahead and quit out of here and we can look at another uh, way that we can you know, see what this cost is of uh, polymorphism and virtual functions. So let's take a look at this vfsize.cpp. So in vfsize.cpp, um, I've just created two structs, uh, one of which has a virtual function, the other one has no virtual function. And let's go ahead and just print out the size of each of these and you know maybe guess what, what the size is going to be. Now there's no data members in here, so those won't be taken up any space. So let's compile this and see what we get, right? So we'll call this VF size and run this. And what we end up getting is a size of eight bytes for the virtual function struct and a size of one byte for the no virtual function uh, struct. So the reason why the no virtual function struct has a single byte, this is just really a dummy byte. It doesn't have any actual data, but it can't take up zero space. So it's just given a single byte. Um, now the virtual function one has eight bytes, and this is because it still needs to store that pointer, right? So all of our you know objects with virtual functions they need to have a pointer to that virtual function table to look up the correct function it needs to call at runtime, right? So we can see that just from looking at the size of these objects as well. So again, this is a brief introduction to polymorphism and virtual functions, right? We can use polymorphism to create these nice unified interfaces for our base classes and derived classes. And we can use, you know, virtual functions and dynamic dispatch to make sure we're still calling the correct methods at runtime. So that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. As always, all these examples can be found at github.com slash coffee before arch. So we take a look at CPP crash course, uh, this repository and under fundamental concepts and under uh, uh, objects down here, you can find um, in this polymorphism directory, all of these examples. So feel free to download this, check it out. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.